Brittany to continue with the program. Thank you so much. Thank you, Leo, for your leadership in our office and for your words. So now I have the pleasure of introducing the president of the National Association of Black Women in Construction. So Ms. Tyling Henry is an entrepreneur, powerful change agent, and staunch advocate for socioeconomic equality. Tyling has been referred to as the follow-up queen. As a result of practicing what she calls the three Ps, professionalism, patience, and persistence in developing relationships and providing access to the resources necessary to create a positive impact on the community she serves. Tylene owns and operates Eugenia Services, which is an MBE and DBE firm, a strategic business planning and development consulting firm where she provides private, public, and governmental sectors. She's also the president of NABWIC, and she serves on Michigan's Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence's Women's Advisory Committee, the Civic Engagement Committee Chair for the Independent Business Association, and she's a volunteer facilitator with Youth for Global and Health Justice. Ms. Henry has a unique ability to create, leverage, and facilitate transformational leadership and developmental programs that integrate youth, budding professionals, and executives in cutting edge and results-driven collaborations. Tylene is proudly committed to social equity, and she insists that diversity, equity, and inclusion is a lifelong journey that requires the ongoing development of meaning, meaningful relationships, measurement, and accountability for all community and organizational stakeholders. And without further ado, I introduce to you Ms. Tylene Henry. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction, Brittany. Um, it's truly been a pleasure to make your acquaintance and get to know you over the past several months. We appreciate all of the efforts, um, tireless efforts of USDOT and MBDA um, as you continue to advocate and um, to develop um, opportunities um, for our voices to be heard, for our businesses to be showcased, and for our unique um, challenges as well as solutions to be brought to the forefront. So as Brittany stated, my name is Tylene Henry. I'm the owner of Ujima Services LLC, which is a leadership and professional development organization. Um, and I am honored and privileged to, privileged to serve as the national president of the National Association of Black Women in Construction. Um, as we continue to advance our slides here, I'm going to share with you briefly um, what we will be uh, going over today. So we'll provide some introductions of our leadership that will be um, sharing some very valuable information with you all today. Of course, we will provide you with the mission and vision of our organization. Um, we'll share some information with you about our legislative platform and agenda. Uh, we'll share some opportunities. Um, with the Department of Transportation. And then, of course, we would be remiss if we didn't share with you some value, some of the benefits and values of being a member um, of this incredible organization. Um, so we, as we advance our slides, um, I would like to uh, let you know that our chair and founder is Ms. Ann McNeil. Um, she is the owner, owner of MCO Construction and Services. Um, she was uh, one of the first Black women licensed general contractors in the state of Florida. Um, and she is one of a very few do, doing business at her level in the state of Florida. And she founded this organization out of a passion <clears throat> and a commitment and a calling to ensure that there was a space for Black women in the construction industry um, to grow, to, thr to, to thrive, and to develop, to develop relationships strategically um, in which that they can grow professionally, um, grow their businesses, and as well help to provide and advocate for opportunities for their communities. Um, as well, we have our Vice President, Kalina Shirley, she is the owner of Catalyst Planning and Development Services, and we will be sure to make sure we drop those links in the chat. So if anyone is interested in learning more, they can. Um, but our Vice President, Kalita Shirley, is um, phenomenal in her role, but she also serves as our legislative chair. Um, and she'll give you some details a little bit later about some of the benefits and value of being a member of the organization and how that can support you in understanding how your business is impact, impacted by 
uh, policy, policy and legislation, and as well the importance of being involved, being an educated and informed um, participant in our democracy. Um, and then we will have Ms. Tina White, who is the president and CEO of Tina's Green Energy Solutions. She's going to be sharing some information with you all regarding some opportunities through um, the NEVI program, um, which is surrounding um, and in involving um, electric vehicles, which is very exciting, great opportunity on the forefront. And so um, we're going to move on now to share our vision. So the vision of the National Association of Black Women in Construction is to build lasting strategic partnerships with first rate organizations and individuals that provide groundbreaking and innovative solutions for black women in construction and their respective communities. We are the voice of Black women in construction. And when we talk about strategic partnerships with first-rate organizations, we're speaking of organizations like the United States Department of Transportation, um, the Minority Business Development Agency, um, various state and municipality organizations that support us in helping to inform and educate our members, as well as our communities on opportunities to participate um, in this development in this um, incredible time that we have right now in America. So we'll move on to our mission. Um, so the National Association of Black Women in Construction was founded to increase the national awareness of Black women in the construction industry. And our charge is to advocate for Black women owned construction and related businesses for contract opportunities. We also want to ensure that we are creating strategic environments that support educational, entrepreneurial, professional, and strategic partnerships. And then last, but most certainly not least, we wanna make sure that we're supporting um, our ability, the access and training of the next generation of black women and minorities in the construction industry. And so we are all very excited to be able to carry forth this mission and vision in our day-to-day -day operations. I will tell you that um, I believe what sets the National Association of Black Women in, in Construction apart is this harmonious and some supportive atmosphere. The majority of our members are business owners and we're at various stages and levels within our businesses, but we support one another and we leverage these strategic partnerships that have been made available through our association with the organization to provide a voice of what we're experiencing in our communities and our businesses, um, and as well um, to ensure that we're providing some solutions that are considerate of not only our businesses, but our communities. Um, so without further ado, I'm very um, excited to just share with you, Ms. Ann McNeil will be joining us a little bit later, um, but she did find that the organization was officially founded December 12, 1991. We are a nonprofit organization. Um, we do have a 100% volunteer board and leadership. Um, and again, we all serve with passion um, and a commitment to make sure that we're uplifting and empowering our businesses and our communities. And I would like to introduce and bring forth Ms. Kalina Shirley, which again is our national vice president and as well as our legislative committee chair. Ms. Shirley, Madam Vice President. Good afternoon, everyone. It is a pleasure to be here today. This morning, I would like to present to you our NABWIC legislative platform. And as it reads, our vision and beyond. NAVOC was founded to increase the national awareness of Black women in the construction industry, and our charge is to advocate for Black women-owned construction businesses for contract opportunities, create strategic environments that support educational, entrepreneurial, professional, and social network connections, and train the next generation of Black women in the construction industry. Our legislative platform here at NAVOC is to inform its members and be for, for them to be prepared to tackle the important public policy issues that we face on a local, state, and national level, including Justice 40 legislative legislation, infrastructure, construction, investment, contract opportunities, Black business program advocacy, workforce, and business development. NETWIC is committed to use this platform to engage and promote the construction industry as a window of opportunity for economic growth in the Black community. Some of the things that we have empowered and educated our network members on over the course of the last, week, last year is 
um, items such as Executive Order 13985 and the Justice Forwarding Initiative. The Executive Order 13985 was uh, signed on the first day of President Biden's uh, uh, oversight, and it proclaims that the President will commit the advancing of racial equity and support for underserved communities through the federal government. Through NABWIC's Legislative Committee, we educate our members on important legislation as Executive Order 13985 and impactful initiatives such as Justice Ford Initiative and how to take the information learned as a tool in speaking with elected officials and representatives on a local, state, and federal level. We are so proud to be able to educate our members and allow them to be voices in their communities as they go and search for opportunities and empower themselves. Thank you so much for allowing me to have this moment today, and we look forward to seeing you at our next Legislative Committee meeting. Back to you, Talene. Thank you so much, Madam Vice President, and we appreciate your leadership and all that you do to inform, empower, and educate, educate our members as well as the communities in which we serve. Um, I would like to now introduce to you Ms. Uh, Tina White. She's the president, CEO, and founder of Tina's Tires, uh, as well as Tina's Green Energy Solutions, LLC, and Brilliant Mind Strategies, Inc. Tina White is a university graduate with a BS degree in print journalism from historical Black universities and um, such as Florida A&M. Um, and I think it's very, um, we are so appreciative to have her because she is our resident excellent expert when it comes to electric Electric, the electrification of vehicles um, and some of the infrastructure components and opportunities that are coming forth to our businesses. And what's so incredibly exciting about this um, to our organization is the fact that there are opportunities to enter this space and to grow economically, professionally, um, and businesses at so many different levels. Um, so whether it's getting certifications um, to support with the installation of EV vehicles or the tires, um, or if it's your business, you have, you know, you're an electrical contractor and you have the capacity and experience within your workforce to install these electric uh, vehicle charging stations, the opportunity are here, um, and we have our resident expert, Ms. Tina Maria White, um, who again is the president, CEO, and founder of Tina's Tire. So, Ms. Tina, without further ado, we are so appreciative to have you here and for you to be the, our resident expert. And we're looking forward to learning more about bipartisan the bipartisan infrastructure law and opportunities with USDOT regarding the National Electric Vehicles Infrastructure Projects. Ms. Tina. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I think for women in particular, this is the most exciting time for us to wealth and to grow our businesses and to have a generational legacy. The bipartisan infrastructure law, um, I probably have read it in details about four times. It's about a 300 page document. And it includes way more things than, than people would really understand. But one of the key components of the bipartisan infrastructure law is electrification. And so as manufacturers start to build electric vehicles, they have to be charged. And in order to uh, stimulate the economy and to, and to get consumers to buy electric vehicles, they have to have the uh, opportunity to know that when they drive, they're not going to have uh, charging anxiety because there are not enough public charges to charge their cars and trucks with. And in order for also the large fleets like the Amazons, the UPSs, um, Old Dominion, Walmart, Coca-Cola, in order for them also to contribute to a zero carbon footprint, they need electric vehicle charging stations. And that is why the infrastructure law has allowed funding for $7.5 billion that will go to DOTs, state DOTs across the country to be put, utilized to install electric vehicle charging stations every 50 miles on public highways. And for women in particular who are in electrical contracting, engineering, construction and community outreach um, 
uh, programs or job capacities, business capacities, this is your time to really go after some large opportunities. Next slide, please. A part of this program, the state DOT NEVI projects, it requires that the electric vehicle chargers install, which are going to be level three chargers, they have to comply with Buy American compliance. And what that means is that they must demonstrate that 55% of all assemblies of iron and steel enclosures are manufactured in the United States. And there are documents that have to be signed by the EV charging station manu uh, manufacturers attesting that their assemblies, iron and steel enclosures have met that Buy America compliance. This is the opportunity that the federal government is giving to bring back manufacturing, which will also create jobs in underserved communities uh, that have not existed because all of our manufacturing have been done in foreign countries. Next slide, please. The following 10 states have received the most funding for from the $7.5 billion for the DOT NEVI projects. And they are Texas, which received a little bit over 4,000, California, about 383,000, Florida, close to 200,000, New York, 175,000, Pennsylvania, 171,000, uh, excuse me, I'm saying thousand, millions, ladies, millions, millions, please remember it's millions. Illinois, 148 million, Ohio, 148 million, Georgia, 135 million, Michigan, 110 million, North Carolina, $109 million. And these dollars will be sent out through what is known as P3, public private partnerships. And what that means is that the, the state DOTs are asking private, uh, publicly traded corporations <laughs> to partner with them for buying <laughs> by using their upfront dollars and then they will be reimbursed 80% after the jobs have been completed, after the installations have been completed. The RFP solicitations are very important for all of us to track each DOT. You can go on their uh, state website and sign up for notifications that will allow you to know when they're having webinars to discuss <coughs> how the DOT in that state <coughs> is going to implement their um, infrastructure program for the EV chargers every 50 miles. Why, so far, what we're seeing in the solicitations and what is coming and who are coming to the table to participate, the solicitation is going to have solicitation specifications that states a number of things. And this is why you'll see why it's only a few major corporations that are in a unique position to participate. The next slide, please. These are the requirements that you will see uh, resoundingly in most of the state solicitations. The properties must be owned or leased within one mile of a designated public highway. Properties must be able to provide EV charging and other conveniences 24 hours. So they want a person to be able to come and charge their vehicle, but also go into that store, be able to use Wi-Fi, buy a hot dog, soda, sandwich, and do whatever they need to do so they're not just looking at the clock, worrying about how fast the car is being charged. The good news though, is that the level three chargers are designed to charge within 15 to 30 minutes, and they will charge six vehicles, a combination of trucks, vans, or our own uh, private SUVs and cars uh, within 15 to 30 minutes. The um, 
Felicitations also require for our safety, which is very important, 24-hour on-site security or 24-hour surveillance security cameras. There must be also 24-hour access to public bathrooms. The property owners or leases of those properties must be able to afford upfront costs for 12 to 24 months while their infrastructure and installation projects of electric vehicle charging stations level threes are being installed. Once those charges are installed, the state will come out and verify that they are running in accordance to the requirements of their solicitations. And that is when the companies will be allowed to invoice the state. And if they invoice the state and the state has approved their invoices, they will receive 80% reimbursement from that state DOT for the installation of those level three chargers every 50 miles. Next slide, please. Um, can we go back to a slide that talks about who are going to be the um, companies that will be charging? Well, I'll just share with you what, okay. On the, what's important to understand when you think about w what properties are within one mile of a designated highway, there are traditional gas stations and stores we go into every day to put you know, gas into our current non-electric vehicles. So they are uniquely positioned to be the prime who will respond to these solicitations. So ladies, please understand who the primes are. Next slide, please. And now we'll talk about how do you get on those primes teams. I'll tell you from firsthand experience, it's not easy. Uh, it is a constant commitment of your time daily to read as much as possible about the industry. Listen to the webinars on the state DOT so you see who's signing in, who's responding to their RFIs, requests for information, and to be very intentional in self-promoting and marketing of your services directly to decision makers. Now, when I talk about decision makers, we could spend a lot of time, we could actually spend a year or more of time actually speaking to the wrong decision makers. And as minority owned businesses in particular, we've gotten caught in a um, bittersweet position with uh, diversity inclusion and diversity equity inclusion um, persons within certain corporations. And oftentimes I'm not sure if they're there to open the doors or to keep the doors closed. However, it's our job to know when we're reaching a brick wall and the door is not going to get open to that particular person and to know how to find the real decision maker and knowing how to pivot. In most companies, like a Shell, a BP, a Wawa, um, a marathon, any of the traditional uh, large corporations that have fueling stations within a mile of a public highway, they're going to also have a dedicated electrification team. I have been able to find those persons on LinkedIn by simply Googling on LinkedIn who is the electrification team for Shell. And more than likely, there are going to be people that will pop up, and then you have to dig deeper to find out if that is the correct person in order for you to start the conversation. In order to start the conversation, be very intentional about what you want to tell them about your company in the very first paragraph and also in the subject line. I have been highly successful, I would say a 98% success rate 
and getting decision makers on LinkedIn at a very high level, presidents, senior vice presidents, global vice presidents to respond to me because I am very um, intentional on what I say in my subject line of the communication and in my very first paragraph. They know what I want in my very first paragraph. I want to be on your team and this is what I offer and this is the value I bring to your team. So you have to be, um, really have thought it out. You only have, you know, maybe 200 words or I don't know how many characters uh, LinkedIn give you to, to get that message. But I've been successful that normally within 30 minutes to the most 24 hours, that person has responded back with me with their email within their corporation asking for my capability statement. And that's how the conversations start. There are also a number of conferences on electrification. There is one called EV Charging Summit and Expo that starts March 29th through the 31st in Las Vegas. It's not too late to sign up um, and participate with that. But all of the major players that will be responding to the DOT state and every project uh, will be there. Um, there will also be people from government agencies there, such as GSA, uh, General Service Administration. And just uh, for information purposes, the General Services Administration control 9,000 federal buildings, and they buy two-thirds of all federal fleet. Um, that comes to about 200,000 combination trucks, vans, and work um, and, and vehicles. And so I am an avid reader. I start my day six days a week at 5 a.m. I suggest others do the same, but I also suggest that you read everything you can get your hands on, including the bipartisan infrastructure law from cover to cover. Read everything on the state DOT sites that they have a site that will give, take you directly to um, the DOT NEVI projects for the electrification for EV chargers. They have a way in which you can sign up so you'll get ongoing communications. It's a heavy uh, lift, but you have to make an internal decision that this is a lift you want to make. And if you make that decision, if you can supply construction material, electrical material, electrical vehicle chargers, and related materials, that's an opportunity for you to be a subcontractor on with that prime team. If you are also providing installation and infrastructure services, which I do under my company, Tina's Green Energy Solutions, I'm currently contracting with Amazon, installing EV chargers for their employees in their um, warehouses and fulfillment centers around the country. I provide those same services for power companies and other corporations, including um, Nova Charge, which is a manufacturer of EV chargers that supply Amazon with their EV chargers. If you are in a general contractor, or, or an engineer, there's opportunities for construction as well as for engineering services. And most importantly, the one that everybody is struggling with, with as primes is how do they implement the mandatory requirements for the Justice 40 initiative? The Justice 40 initiative is, in my um, experience and history of being a business owner since I was 25 years old is the most important legislation for underserved communities um, than any legislation I've ever seen come forth. And what the Justice 40 initiative means is that every prime that submit a response to a state DOT NEVI project, they are mandated by President Biden's executive order that 40% of all the, the level three chargers 
must be installed in underserved communities. And how do you know what is an underserved community? You can simply go to the SBA website um, or the Hub Zone website of the, at SBA and put in a zip code. And that zip code will give you a check mark if that is a Hub Zone community, which is a historically underutilized uh, business zone. If it has a Hub Zone check mark, that yes, it is then it also means that it's an underserved community and it must receive 40% of all the level three and EV chargers um, that the state DOTs will reimburse the primes for at 80% of their expenditures. Primes must also conduct extensive outreach to state stakeholders in the underserved communities, implement on the, on the job training, and an apprenticeship program. So the Justice Board is also intentionally saying, as you are receiving this windfall of $7.5 billion that is going to be redistributed back to private and publicly traded corporations who are going to have to install electric vehicle charging stations on their properties in order to capture persons that are going to be leaving diesel and gasoline they're now giving them 80 percent of that cost that would have been theirs as a business 100 percent so the federal government is now saying we want you not only to help us help the world become electrified in the united states we also want you to help us train persons to have sustainable opportunities for career paths in electrification. There is a tremendous need for apprentices and for people straight out of high school that are not on a career path to learn how to install electric vehicle chargers under the experience and leadership of a licensed electric contractor and a journeyman. So this is uh, to me the most important legislation I've seen. I am a hub zone certified SBA business. I am in an underserved community that is 70% black, a 28% below poverty rate. And I intentionally hire people that are unemployed underemployed or simply are overlooked even ex-offenders because majority companies will not give them an opportunity to learn and grow within their businesses so um anyone that have any of these uh particular skill sets i highly encourage you to start doing the work um i will tell you that um state dot's will tell you that these solicitations will go out every year from 23 through 26. However, business experience says that when a prime has a team, that's the team they're gonna continue to stay with throughout the entire length of this funding. So don't sit on this. This is a, a time to act very uh, intentionally urgent to find out who these primes out are, how to get before them. And how can USDOT help us? USDOT can help us by actually bringing those primes to a matchmaker so they can meet us in person in Washington, DC. They know firsthand what our capabilities are and they have firsthand opportunities to incorporate us uh, from the very first uh, response to any state DOTs. Ladies, I also encourage you to be certified in multiple states if you have the capacity. These are large projects. They're not gonna be broken down for very, very small companies. And so you might uh, have to have partners in other states 
but it's very um, a doable uh, undertaking if you commit the time and the resources to get it done. That my, uh, the last of my slides. Thank you so much to our resident expert, Ms. Tina White. We appreciate your leadership, um, how thorough you are and how dedicated you are to making sure that you have the facts and the intentional action items um, that we can take to really benefit from these opportunities. It's one thing to know about something, um, but to actually have an opportunity to know what are some steps. So we appreciate you um, sharing those tips on how you build relationships and how you reach out and identify the actual decision makers. I'm very appreciative of what you shared about um, connecting with diversity, equity, and inclusion um, folks from organizations. Um, sometimes it can be beneficial and sometimes it's not. Um, and that speaks to the capacity building that needs to happen all the way around. Oftentimes, um, when we speak with agencies and we speak with larger prime firms as an organization, we're constantly hearing about this capacity building for small businesses. Well, some business, small businesses don't need any more capacity building, but some of the larger prime organizations and even agencies, they need some capacity building to identify how can they effectively and progressively work with small businesses. Um, and so I think that that was an excellent point. And I think that we are doing everything that we can as an organization um, to make sure that we are bridging those gaps and we are providing that voice and that advocacy um, from the from from business owners. So thank you so much, Tina. Um, I would like to take a pause before we move forward and talk about some of our excitement around um, the equity and infrastructure um, program. We want to uh, bring forth Miss Ann McNeil, if you are available. Um, I believe that she has joined us and as she's um, making her way hopefully to, to the forefront, I'm going to just share a little bit of information about her. Um, again, she is a licensed general contractor um, and she discovered that women in the construction business were far and few in between. Um, she strongly believed that a network of women in construction needed to be created. As a result, she started the National Association of Black Women in Construction. The association was created to help build a pipeline for Black women in the public sector, Black women in the private sector, and Black women entrepreneurs, as well as the young ladies that were still in school. The objective of the school component is for Black girls to study STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics in middle school, high school, and college. So that if they desire to enter the construction or build industry at any levels, um, they're, pro they're provided the opportunity to do that, whether that's trades or manage management or ownership. The main purpose of NABWIC is to create a network of professional women in the construction industry who teach each other how to turn contacts into contracts. And this is done through programs like our Billion Dollar Luncheon. And I think that perhaps maybe we lost her again. So hopefully before we get done, we'll get a chance to bring her back up. Um, I'm going to share um, some information here um, about the equity in infrastructure. Um, project. We are so excited to have connected with Mr. Phil Washington, um, Mr. John Picari, as well as Ms. Diana Mendez. Um, we are excited about um, these efforts that have put forth by a group that you know, simply saw a need and decided to pull together their resources and relationships um, so that they could bring forth some opportunity um, and equity as it comes to participation within the bipartisan infrastructure law. Um, so the Equity and Infrastructure Project was co-founded by Philip A. Washington, which is the CEO of Denver International Airport, John D. Bakari, which is a former Deputy Secretary of the U.S. Department of Transportation, and others, and the anticipation of the $1.2 trillion Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. Um, the EIP brings to life uh, President Biden's Justice for You initiative and executive order to increase the share of diverse firms fulfilling infrastructure contracts. Um, I think that it's also very important that we, uh, and we are very excited um, to also make sure that we mention those first um, movers. So the Chicago Transit Authority, 
Um, they signed uh, on to the pledge and made a commitment to support these efforts. Um, and that's Mr. Dorval Car Carter uh, Jr. And then the Denver International Airport, that's Mr. Philip A. Washington. Um, Metro Water uh, District of Southern California, um, that's Adel Haggett Khalil. And then as well, Mario Cordero of Port the Port of Long Beach and Southern Pennsylvania Transportation Authority. Um, and that would be Ms. Leslie uh, Rivers, who's the CEO and general, general manager. And we're gonna make sure to share with you the equity and infrastructure um, website so that you can go on and see all of the organizations and agencies that have signed on to the pledge um, since these efforts have begun. And so um, recently we've have an, had an opportunity to connect with the advisory board. Um, we have been invited to participate and we're very excited about that. Um, and we wanted to just share, because we have this platform, some of the goals um, that have been set forth. So um, some of the key priorities of the EIP are establishing additional certification reciprocity between agencies. So many uh, small businesses um, have expressed the concern with um, a lot of the paperwork and challenges that they're going through with submitting um, certification. So you may be able to do business in one part of the country and be certified and you've got to go through the process all over again to do the same thing in a neighboring state. And so they are working together to um, put heads together to identify how can there be some additional certification reciprocity between agencies. Then as well, identifying and creating solutions um, to contracting opportunities um, that are faced by historically underutilized businesses. And so historically underutilized businesses is kind of a catch-all term. Um, we are speaking about, um, you know, typically those will be, um, um, you know, DBE firms, SBE firms, SMBE firms, and WBE firms. So historically underutilized businesses. How do we identify specific opportunities and solutions that will support their participation in a meaningful way? Um, and then as well, launching an accountability dashboard. So making sure that we can publicly monitor the progress, right? Um, it's great to hear about all of the opportunities and all of the work that's being done, but it's even better to have that piece of accountability. And so we're excited about that. And then making sure to grow that advisory board council to include more members across various industries, um, sectors, and backgrounds. And I'll also say that um, increasing the number, size, and proportion of contracting opportunities for historically underutilized businesses. So, you know, it's great to participate, but we want to make sure that it's in a meaningful way. And the thought is that if these uh, historically underutilized businesses can truly can participate in a meaningful way, that will positively impact the communities they serve, um, the communities in which the work is being done in, as well as the, the workforce in those areas. And then also, making sure that these historically underutilized businesses have an opportunity to become prime contractors in, within these opportunities. Um, so not just you know participation, but actually some growth and progress as a result. And so again, we will share um, the link. We encourage everyone to go to those websites, look to see what agencies in your area and industry have signed on to the pledge. Um, follow Ms. Tina's advice about building those relationships. And we are going to parlay here into a bit more information about NAVWIC and why these connections are so important and why you should uh, join our organization. Okay. Um, so, 47% of our membership are certified um, as WOSB, uh, MWBE, DBE, ACDBE, VOSB, or SDVOSB. And so if you're not familiar with any of those certifications, even more of a reason for you to join our organization so we can help point you in the right direction. Um, I would say that was a great thing for me to learn when I first joined the organization. I was like, what are all these acronyms and how can they benefit me and my business? 11% of our businesses are either 8A or hub zone certified, and 10% um, of annual uh, gross revenues exceed $1 million. If we can proceed to the next slide, excellent. And so why should you join? So contracting opportunities. We are gonna share some of our upcoming events, but quarterly we do a billion dollar transportation luncheon. You heard that. 
a billion dollar transportation luncheon. I didn't say a million, I said a billion. So we do billion dollar industry luncheons on a quarterly basis. In January, we typically do the transportation industry. Um, and we've been so fortunate to have the support of USDOT Secretary Buttigieg as an advocate um, to help bring and raise awareness of our organization, not only through um, personalized greetings that he provided during some of our um, live um, events online, but as well, um, you know, our mention and shout out on the Breakfast Club. So all of you you uh, millennials that listen into morning radio. Um, we were very appreciative um, for that shout out on the Breakfast Club a couple of months ago. But our billion dollar luncheon is an opportunity for us to bring forth agencies that have billion dollar master programs. And so in advance, our members have the opportunity to learn about business that's coming down the pipeline, contracting opportunities, building relationships with the decision makers within these agencies, understanding what the goals are within the agency as it, as it pertains to participation and inclusion, and as well, that draw for, draws in the prime engineering and construction firms. So that gives our members an opportunity to build relationships with the prime engineering and construction firms that are seeking opportunities within these agencies and within these industries. So again, quarterly, we have a billion dollar luncheon in April, April 13th to be exact. Exact. We will have a virtual billion dollar luncheon in aviation opportunities. Um, we will have a presentation by the Chicago O'Hare Airport, as well as the Wayne County Airport Authority. Um, and I believe we have a couple of others that are on deck as well. So please make sure that you visit our website um, and register for our virtual billion dollar transportation luncheon in aviation. Um, the remainder of the year will also have a virtual billion dollar luncheon in ener energy, as well as a virtual billion dollar luncheon in public private partnerships um, bonding education and so we provide access to bonding education just really through the relationships we have with our local agencies so for example here in michigan where i'm located the michigan department of transportation has an excellent bonding education program we rally our members and our um our small business community that is associated within our organization to participate in these programs. We have access to bonding companies um, that are aware of some of the unique challenges that small construction and build firms face when it comes to capitalizing projects. So um, we provide education and access to education and opportunity as it pertains to bonding. Training, development, and educational programs. Um, as I mentioned earlier, most of us are business owners and we are are sometimes so busy working our business that we're not always growing our business. So we provide opportunities for our members to reach to access research resources that can support them with improving and increasing efficiency in their operational procedures, um, methods for financial accounting that may be specifically beneficial for build and construction um, type of firms um, as well. We are concerned with the overall well-being. So we also have had um, mental health sessions to make sure that our members that are business owners and leaders within the community, leaders within their families, moms, wives, daughters, um, elected officials, that they can maintain balance and overall well-being so that they can give the best of themselves for themselves as well as, well as their families, their businesses, and their communities. And so we have a wide variety of training and development, and most of that stems from how we uh, like to survey our membership and we find out directly you know, what are our members interested in learning? What do they need to continue to grow, thrive, and be um, not only progressive, but also profitable? Um, strategic partnerships. That's how we're here today um, with the U.S. Department of Transportation. We appreciate this opportunity um, to raise awareness of our organization and some of the very amazing and unique benefits that we provide to our members and the communities that we serve. Um, that's not only nationally, but also locally. So we develop relationships with our local DOTs, our local um, MBDA organizations, as well as our local chambers of commerce. Um, we, we have collaborated Operations and a memorandum of understanding with organizations such as AMAC, the Airport Minority Advisory uh, Council, um, COMTO. So we build relationships with these organizations um, that have similar mission and vision so that we can share resources um, educationally, but as well as to be able to um, provide social networking and business networking opportunities and community service. 
um, you can find us serving within our communities. Um, we are very concerned with making sure that we are providing access um, to uh, training and development opportunities within the build and construction industry. Um, but we're also supporting women's organizations, youth organizations, showing up at schools um, to provide opportunities to share experience within the construction industry and provide that pathway um, to build careers. And then our legislative advocacy, which was shared by Ms. Kalina Shirley. So these are, you know, if this, if those aren't great enough reasons for you to join the organization, I don't know what to tell you. It's not for you, but we're going to advance here to the next slide. All right, and we're going to share with you um, why some of our members joined. So if we can share um, Ms. Donaldson's short video. Uh-oh, I can't hear the sound. Okay, so we'll share the link. We'll broadcast the link. We encourage you to listen in. Um, these are some phenomenal stories about why uh, folks join the organization and the benefit that it has, has had for them, their families, and their businesses. Um, I'm going to continue on and share with you some of our national programs and events, if we can advance. So we have our national meetings in January, June, and September. Um, we uh, met in Orlando, Florida this past January and June. Uh, we will be in New York. And in September, every September, we are in Washington, D.C. during the Congressional Black Caucus. Um, of course, our quarterly billion dollar luncheons, which are virtual. Um, we have our uh, capital fly-in days, which are based on our areas and states where we'll go into um, the capital for their fly-in day and um, learn about and advocate for um, issues that are in policy that are impacting our businesses and communities. Um, we have industry day, and that's typically in May, and that's where we go into schools and we help to um, make sure that our students, especially young women, are aware of opportunities within the build space, as well as further abilities to further their education and STEM careers, whether that be through a certification program or a um, undergraduate or even graduate degree. We have our NABWIC uh, podcast, which happens weekly, and we have quarterly hard hats and heels. So, of course, you want to make sure that if we have one in your area that you make it there because it's an excellent time and a great opportunity to build relationships as well as your business. We're going to move to the next slide. All right, here go some photos of some of the events. Um, that we've had. Uh, we have an investment education program because business owners, we have to be aware of how we can make our money work for us. And so we provide a comprehensive environment in which your business can grow and thrive, in which you can grow your professional networking relationships. And if you are in a professional career and work for a large um, company within the construction industry, there's opportunities to grow professionally and build relationships there as well. And so, um, you know, one of the most important things that I can tell you is there's something that we have that we call the spirit of Anne, the spirit of Anne McNeil. And it's one of those things where if you've ever met Miss Anne McNeil, I don't have to explain it to you, but it's a feeling. It's a welcoming feeling. Um, it's wisdom, it's self-confidence, and it's the understanding that to whom much is given, much is expected. And so we support one another. We have a harmonious and supportive atmosphere. We know that the unique talents and gifts that each one of us have been given, um, the businesses that we are responsible to lead, um, they're unique. And we know that what we have to give the world, no one else has to give the world. And it's up to us to support one another so that we can advocate and ensure that now, because there's never been such a time as this with trillions of dollars on the table, um, that we use our voices, that we use our relationships, that we use our experience, our intellectual property, everything that we have to make sure that not only our businesses are able to progress, grow and thrive, but we can open the door for other businesses as well as those in our communities that are seeking opportunities um, to grow and thrive professionally, um, through whether that be through the trades or professional careers. Here go some events that we have coming up. Um, we have our, um, our billion dollar aviation luncheon that's coming up. 
And I think this was a flyer from last year. Those were some of the sponsors that we had. But again, April 13th will be our billion dollar aviation luncheon. We'll keep moving here. All right, um, and this presentation is going to be shared. Um, so you'll have access to some links. We have a membership portal in which you can connect with other members across the country. We have a newsletter. Um, we have a calendar of events that's online. And then we are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And we encourage you to visit those links. So connect with us. If you are in here and you're in the chat, we want to hear from you. We want to know your business name, your name, and contact information. We're looking forward to connecting with you. And we will advance. And so we appreciate your time. Um, and we are so appreciative, again, of USDOT for um, providing us a platform in which we could raise awareness um, as well as provide some education. We encourage you to join us today. Um, we have a member, new member onboarding meeting every second Tuesday online. And so if you visit us at www.navwick.org and select join now, we encourage you to join us. And um, we've dropped our contact information in the chat. We are uh, ready, willing, and available to build a relationship with you. Um, Ms. Shirley, any um, final comments or, or remarks, Madam Vice President? It's been a pleasure to speak with you all today. And we look forward to seeing you all and being uh, uh, new members of our organization. Thank you. Excellent. Ms. Tina, you're on mute. Once again, I encourage everyone, if this is an opportunity that you think would be good for your company, put as much time and energy in it, and you will definitely reap the rewards. It is nothing wrong with the mindset that you want to create wealth and leave a legacy for generations to come. Thank you, ladies. All right. Again, thank you so much uh, to Ms. Brittany Young for the opportunity and for collab the collaborative um, efforts that uh, took place to make this happen today. So thank you. Thank you. I just want to thank you so much to the NABWIC team, Ms. Colleen Henry, Ms. Tina White, and Ms. Colleen and Shirley for joining us for our Team Talk session and providing so much valuable information. You shared so much from the equity and infrastructure piece to electric charging programs and various opportunities to each and every one of the business owners that joined today. I encourage you all to join their events, the Billion Dollar Luncheon. I've joined that in January this year and last year, and it was very phenomenal. And even in person, the networking events that they do have, that's where the things happen. I definitely encourage you to join their events. Um, I definitely wanted to thank my team in the Oscar group, of course, Leo, and the rest of the team, as well as Natalie Rosa, our ADA and Hub Zone Advocate, for helping me put this event together. Um, to recap this week, we had a buyer side chat on Tuesday, meet the mentor session yesterday, and then, of course, our team and talk session today. So as I mentioned earlier, we have these um, Connections Marketplace sessions each and every month, and you can recap all of our events in our news and events section of our website on www.transportation.gov backslash OSDBU. Um, please subscribe to our small business events too. Um, you'll be in the know on each event that we host, and I did drop that in the chat for you to sign up for. So again, thank you all for joining us today, and we will see you next time. Thank you. Thank Have you. Have a good one, ladies. Bye-bye. Okay, we made it. We made it. We made it. All I can say is, oh.
Hi, Kalina. Great job, ladies. Thank you, girl. I'm so glad it's look, I'm so glad it's over. I said, oh my Lord Jesus. She was talking about some presentation. I'm like, what? What presentation? I, I'm thinking we just gonna show up and introduce ourselves or whatever was happening. I'm like, what?
I'm gonna go. No, no, it, on June, we gonna, we're, we'll be in New York, hopefully within the next week or so, we'll know what hotel can accommodate us so we can share that information. But we will be in New York together in um, June 24. Yeah, and Michelle, did you come on? Michelle? Michelle, you got accolades. You just getting here, but, you know, everybody is giving you virtual rounds of applause because couldn't have happened without you uh, pulling the, pulling our... I think we're gonna we can just do better moving forward. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Yes, ma'am. the Q&A.
even matter. But all I have to say is, I thank God we made it. <laughs> and I will tell you, Miss Ann, what you probably want to do is make sure that you delete. You know, they got to take teams off of your desktop and re-add it. Because I, I was having a very similar problem um, not too long ago. Great job. What's your sign? What's your zodiac sign? Oh my gosh, you a little bit of a hothead though. You know what I'm saying? You
Oh yeah, we I already knew. She told me from the jump that she wasn't gonna be there. We knew that. And what do you mean she's excluded? Well, I think a part of the challenge that I that I know is that sometimes Valerie is focused on Valerie and not necessarily how she she's not really gonna participate or do anything that's not necessarily gonna help her, which isn't a bad thing. But I think that's a part of it. And then two, two, sometimes I, I'll just tell you, and I mean, I'm new, you know, I'm not like, not like I've been in this industry for 15 years, but I, I learned really fast and I'm quick on my feet. We've been in meetings where we got together beforehand and we talked about what these people can help us with and what our, com our conversation is, what we are and aren't going to talk about. And sometimes Valerie acts brand new, you know what I'm saying? When we get into the conversation, like we didn't prepare for this and we didn't already have an agenda. So I'm not, I don't, you know, I, I the board typically is emailed and I'm pretty sure everybody got it, that's on the board or was on the board, you know, as of last year, got an email about whether or not they wanted to participate in this event, which would include Valerie. So probably maybe not 11th hour including Valerie, but I'm, I'm confident that she got a message because every all the board members um, were sent um, a notification about this upcoming event. And myself and Kalina were the only two people who re responded. So... She was invited. She was invited to our meeting with Picari and to our meeting with Phil Washington. I'm pretty sure, and she declined. Well, Miss Ann said that Valerie had already met with Phil Washington one on one. And that's why she wasn't coming. Because remember, initially, we were going to go meet with Phil earlier. And then this meeting in person with John McCurry came up. So I think that, I know that, you know, I she Miss Ann told me that. with her on a trip someplace. She just met him. Hey, okay, you want to come with me to D.C.? Like, what? I agree with you. 
you on that, but I'm just trying to work on what I can do. And I will tell you, I was I used to be able to function okay, you know, in a minute. You know what I'm saying? That was kind of how I was able to get clients because they'd be in a situation and I'm like, okay, here, you know, fix it through it. But now at this stage in my life, I don't I can't I don't have it the capacity anymore to operate in pandemonium. You know what I'm saying? I gotta have peace. I like to be planned. You know, even with my teaching, I, I get on my, you know, on a person who runs that company, letting them know I can't, I don't want to show up. I need to know what the agenda is in the curriculum before it starts, not just the day before we're going. I need to know what we're going to be teaching the whole time so I can be mentally prepared. You know, so...
up in the morning. About to go to bed at night. I deserve happiness, joy. This joy and pain may be like sunshine and rain. Joy and pain is like sunshine and rain. Come on now. Thank you. 